So one day, for no particular reason, I had to change the battery to a smart water valve. This particular valve being the Oras 272101. One might ask, why would you ever want to have a smart anything? In this particular case, it's because people are dumb and they leave the water valves open and then if something leaks, the entire building is now filled with water. These things will turn themselves off after a set amount of time, usually 4 or 12 hours. And since they are wireless, they're very convenient to install. The downside being that they are battery operated. So this button, uh, which we have here on the table, is entirely separate from the valve itself and is battery operated. Now in this case the battery has gone flat and I tried to replace it and the entire battery holder came off. And not only that, it ripped the pad when it came off. Now thankfully I do actually have the proper tools to fix this and I managed to find some high temperature epoxy so I should be able to re-glue the pad back into its place. Once the pad has been repaired, I can then smash the battery holder back into the case and hopefully this thing will work. Because a new one is roughly two to three hundred euros. Here's the affected area under a microscope. We've almost pulled the entire trace to the via. Some of it remains, so we can probably solder to that. Thankfully the pad ripped off pretty cleanly. We can see a connection to the left that's missing and also It's not really visible in the video, but the trace is actually pointing quite a bit upwards And here is the pad itself seems to be in pretty good condition all things considered still attached with solder to the battery case We'll just get to desoldering that. Desoldering from the top side is not going to work, or rather underside in this case, because the pad is a pretty shitty conductor of heat, so we'll have to turn this thing over and then start applying heat. I'm using a TS100 as my soldering iron, and the heat is at 350 degrees Celsius. No idea what that is in Imperial. I just jam the knife-like surface between the pads and they slowly start to come off. The biggest problem in this part of the repair is that molten solder actually has a surface tension and since the pad weighs roughly nothing, it clings to the surface tension and it's a kind of a pain to get rid of the soldering iron tip. Usually you'll want to have tweezers for this. Instead of waving the soldering iron like a maniac like I just did. And here's the removed pad in all of its unfocused glory. Now that we have the pad, let's do a test fitting with all the finesse of a drunk elephant to make sure that we ha haven't missed any connections, like the one on the left side that said uh, there seems to be a little nub on the pad. Based on the size of and length of the nub, it seems that we won't need much extra wire to resolder that. We can probably just bridge it back into the via. As for the other one, it doesn't seem that the trace is anywhere to be found, so we'll probably have to make a new one. To get the pad to stick to the PCB, we can't exactly use superglue, as a normal superglue will lose half of its strength at 80 degrees Celsius, and even the higher grade ones will lose 50% and 120 degrees. And since we're soldering at 300 to 350 degrees, we're going to need a two component high temperature epoxy to do the job for us. Thankfully, I managed to find some. What I'm using here is Circuit Works epoxy overcoat, which is technically meant to be go over the traces. Uh, we're just going to be using it 
it to glue down the pad. The name will be in the video description. Also, I try to use the minimal amount possible, and even here I have roughly 100 times the amount of epoxy that I need to actually glue down the pad. As the amount of epoxy required is really, really minimal, this is one of those times that more isn't better. So apply a little bit at a time and then add if you need more, not the other way around, like I did. The amount that you see here is way too much. Don't put this much, because if you do, then you'll have to remove the pad and try again. As you can see, the excess epoxy will just get everywhere and make things difficult. Which means that not only do you need to clean the pad, you also need to clean the PCB and then reapply the epoxy. Now that we've managed to clean up the excess epoxy from the previous fuck up, we'll just try again, see if it works better. What I'm doing here, applying extra epoxy around the pad to anchor it better into place, probably isn't necessary, but I really don't want to do this again. Once you're happy with your application or can't be asked anymore, then you can either leave the epoxy to set for 24 hours or you can instead blast it with 100 degrees Celsius air for an hour and it'll set. And since I'm in a bit of a hurry, I'm going to choose the latter one and I just made a rig that would blast the spot with 100 degrees Celsius air. And since the air thingy is notoriously unreliable in its temperature settings, I actually measured the temperature that it was blasting out with a infrared thermometer to make sure that it actually stays at 100 degrees and checked on it every couple of minutes. Now that the hour is over, we're going to use a highly scientific method to make sure that the pad actually stuck to its place. We're going to poke it with a stick. And once we've managed to make sure that the stick can't move the pad, we'll move on to soldering. We'll start by applying a lot of flux and then tinning the leftovers of the lower trace.
So once the tinning is done, we can move into soldering the replacement trace into the rest of the trace and the via. To make the connection as good as possible, here I'm trying to bend the wire to be roughly the shape of the old trace so that more of it will grab onto the old trace and the connection will be better and less likely to break again. It's also possible to push the wire into the via sometimes, which then when soldered will result in a good connection. And as you can see, it's really fun to try to solder things that weigh nothing and are really tiny. They don't like to stay still. So get used to holding them in place or repositioning them. Once you've managed to anchor the wire from one side, take care to not heat it from the other end too much because it's really easy to desolder both of the ends. 
and then you have to do the whole thing all over again. Note that the reason why you can't see me soldering the wire to the pad is because the camera area in my microscope is smaller than the area that the eyepieces can see. So I sadly soldered it while not recording it. And I managed to do it again. The soldering of the left trace to the pad was done outside of camera, so I just cut it out because you can't really see it. So I just soldered it to the pad because that seems to anchor them easier and there's more thermal mass and it's easier then to solder it to the VO. Now that I've managed to make the connection to the VIA, I'll just add a bunch of solder to the pad itself, so I can just heat the battery holder leg and it'll solder itself to the pad. Before trying to press the battery holder back onto its place, I'm going to replace the old solder in the battery legs with new solder. With the other tip, it's really easy to solder the battery case to its place. Just make sure that you don't accidentally touch the sides of the case like I did, because plastic melts. Thankfully, the spot that I touched is inside of the case and doesn't show outside. So it's just a cosmetic flaw, which you can't even see. You can see the affected area here, so it's not that bad. And now we can see the repaired device, and it has a new battery. And if a green light comes on when we press it, then we'll know that it works again, because previously no lights came on. And the red light just means that it can't contact the valve that it's trying to contact. Thank you for watching, and I hope you've learned something, and I'll see you in the next one.